Have you ever experienced something in your life that was pretty challenging and now you're in a place of wondering is something else gonna happen? You know, as I'm getting older, I'm recognizing that life will happen. There will be amazing days and there will be low days. And what I am striving to do is figure out how I can remain calm, how I can remain at peace, regardless of what is going on in my world around me. It's not always easy, but for me, the ultimate goal is to figure out how can I own my emotions and no longer allow my emotions to own me. When it comes to thinking about being calm, I recognize that it's something I have to practice. It's not something that I am just innately born with. There's a select few people I feel like I know in this world that automatically revert to staying calm. As for me, <laughs> I'm working on that and I realized that the more that I practice being calm every single day, the more that it will be easier in difficult situations to remain on my square and I think just daily. As I think about my thoughts, I recognize that they come up sometimes and if I don't get in control of them, they start to spiral. And one thing that has been helping me in this realm is recognizing that just because I have a thought, it doesn't mean that that thought is true. Ultimately, when a negative thought comes into my mind, I work really hard to try to lean away from that thought. I'm not necessarily ignoring the thought, but I'm also not allowing the thought to allow other thoughts to be born from it. So essentially, I pause and I ask myself, is this thought even true? Like, is this thought true? Is there any truth in it? Is there any data I can pull from it? Typically, the answer is no. And now the thought can't keep spiraling into my mind. During the season, I'm also really monitoring what I'm giving my attention to and what I'm kind of allowing into my life each day. And that's also created kind of a healthy separation for me from social media. And, you know, I'm trying to find my balance and my square here because I want to create content, but I don't want to consume so much content. But I realize for me and my mental health and for me to put, stay at a good place, then watching and consuming a lot of content um, is not good for me. So that's why I've kind of been liking to do more podcasts and things that I have a control over. Like I can scroll, see what they're talking about and decide if I want to watch it or not or listen to it or not. I've also found it really important during this season to figure out exactly what I need. So some days I recognize that I have to give myself a little bit more permission to rest. And let me tell you, this is an area that I have been working on very diligently because I feel like I used to have to, well, I'll say currently, I feel like I'm having to reshape my perspective when it comes to rest. Because I felt before like I had to earn rest, like I had to check certain things off my list and then I could rest. And now I recognize that creating these small pockets of time for rest throughout the day, whether it's sitting down for a moment, whether it's taking a 20 minute nap, or whatever the case may be, actually allows me to be a lot more productive. Also, when it comes to taking time to do more of what I need, I find it to be really important to get back to things that I just simply enjoy. And somewhere along this journey that has gotten lost for me, honestly. And I have been doing a lot more of things that I enjoy lately. I've started to get back into reading even. I used to read a lot and I think that essentially reading is something that's kind of sparking something for my inner child because I used to read a lot as a kid and you know I feel like I used to get so lost in the books and now to feel that way as an adult where I'm able to just read and get lost in the story or read and get lost in whatever the author is saying it creates such a place of just peace and I feel so calm in those moments so something I'm working hard to get back to and I'm finding little cute spots around Atlanta that kind of curate this space and environment for reading. So I went to this little coffee shop that was also a bookstore and I was reading in there the other day. Definitely will say I'm getting back to doing more of the things that I enjoy and that alone is allowing me to feel so much more calm every day. One thing that has been helping me stay a lot more calm is creating kind of a soft schedule for the day. Without some type of schedule or a game plan, I end up feeling pretty disheveled and I'm just like all over the place. Like, what am I doing? What should I be working on? Then I may disassociate because I'm frustrated now and I may end up on social media and that's not what we want. So ultimately, I find that I'm a lot more calmer and at peace if I have some type of soft schedule kind of outlining my day. I may block off some time. I may just say, you know what, I wanna get these three things done and this is how long each one of them will probably take for me to get done. I 
have also found it so important to open up about how I'm feeling in a situation. Like sometimes I, I'll say it this way. I feel like I didn't stumble into the world of therapy. I feel like it found me because of my personality and just who I am as a person because I innately turn outward and I innately am just asking how are you since something's going on is everything okay and it's like regardless of what I'm feeling I, I turn outward so then opening up has has not been an easy journey I will say that when I have safe spaces to open up in I will open up and um everywhere it just doesn't feel like a safe space to me and I've, I've accepted that I do feel like within my marriage and just being married in general has forced me to become more of an open person and share more of my feelings and my emotions and that has been really helpful for me turning towards Christian and my husband to kind of share certain things that are bothering me or concerning me help me remain a lot more calm because he's such a calm person as well um gosh that man is like so calm when I tell you Anything could be going on, like it could literally be a bear walking into the house and he's gonna say, hey, um, grab your bag, um, we're gonna head to the car. Like, cause he knows if I turned around, I would like panic and freak out and all the things. Like, I'm dramatic with that example, but I truly feel like it would be that way. I think in this area of opening up to other people, there should be some acknowledgement of how often this is happening or how frequently this is occurring. Because if it's constant and we constantly feel like the only way to feel peace or to feel calm is when we're talking to people every day this is occurring, I think that's a sign that we should then talk to a therapist and really get to the root because I have family members and the people that we love, as much as they love us and they care about us, they can't like always fix our problems or get to the root of our problem because they're so entangled in it as well and their emotions are so entangled. So that's when it's important to say, hey, let me let me start to talk to someone else about this and you know, I can I can always share with people I love. This is coming up a lot, so let me talk to somebody about it. I recognize that we'll go through different seasons. Some seasons we are just simply trying to survive. Some seasons we're moving past survival and we are trying to thrive. And I, I recognize that that plays a really big part in what strategies may be helpful for you because that's kind of been the case for me. In this current season, I'm focusing on thriving and I don't want my emotions to completely run rampant or be in control of me. So these things have been really helpful for me during this season. I'm hoping you're able to pull little snippets away that can be helpful for you as well. So I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching until the very end. Bye.